So, um, I appreciate the feedback on that. Um, we've got the projector in there, and we we'll switch it to that. Okay. Um, so let's uh, let's talk some about um, uh, any laws of provisions of, um, and then tie-ins to Java. Yeah. So, so we're providing a set of Java tutorials that provide essential essentials of of Java programming as required for any logic use. My comments here are very pragmatic, but sometimes um, they will get into um, into uh, a little bit of the theory just so you can understand what's going on, understand error messages, understand um, uh, the types of problems that you encounter in building the model. Um, in, in today's discussion, I, I want to talk about um, classes, um, their relationships to objects we manipulate, and and um, um, these these references we use to refer to them. So I argued uh, today that that a class is is like a mold uh, out of which we can cast different objects, and so a given class corresponds to many objects at, at one time. There's many objects that are what we call instances of this class. Um, so a given person class becomes many particular people at one time, many persons. And um, essentially, the, the class defines the behavior. It defines the state, what information is stored there, and the attributes associated with it. Um, and these particular instances of it will often differ with respect to you know, parameter values, aspects of that state. But they share the basic types of behavior that are possible and the sort of information that's stored within that class, okay, uh, within a class like that. So again, the class de uh, the class defines personhood, the person class, colorness, colorhood, or color, etc. Um, and uh, classes are central to object-oriented programming, and we will build a lot of concepts um, upon classes within the next uh, within these sets of tutorials. Um, uh, okay, um, I think I'm going to uh, skip uh, skip through here. Familiar classes in any logic than the main class, person class, or agent classes, and simulation classes. Fundamentally, we can define as many classes as we want. And sometimes we'll define classes that actually aren't, don't have any logic support directly, but are just useful, as we say, abstractions. So, for example, a class might define a point you know, point on the screen with an X and Y location. Or there might be a class that defines um, uh, the types of information we wish to accumulate associated with a person if they flow through a medical, uh, a medical system. Um, and uh, as the person flowing through to record that information, our class that records the history, the biography of a given person within, um, so a class that records the, the biography of a given person Within um, uh, within a uh, within the the model, okay. So, oh, you sure? Okay, there's a high chair back there as well. But um, <laughs> kind of like you do half half half. Um, yeah. So um, I, I noted that, that objects are instances of class, and this is an important distinction. When we say class, we say object. We mean different things. A class is a entity that defines object hood for a type of or for a subset of objects. And an object is an instance of a class. It's a particular, it's a particular sort of case of that uh, class um, uh, that's that's when the model's running. A class is defined at when you're defining the model. Objects exist in, but they exist only only when you're running the model. Okay? And these are the sort of things you often do with objects. You can read fields for them. You can read variables. You can set that information or get information from them. You can call methods to compute something or perform some task. These are frequently done in different types of methods. So a method is, is we call it a function sometimes. It does some work for us. And the work you can do is either to compute a value. It, it totals up some quantity. Maybe computes a statistic over the population. Maybe it returns the number of uh, neighbors I have. How it does that, you don't have to care about that, but that's what it promises, and it will go and do the necessary work. Some 
methods by contrast perform a task. What was the method we saw today that performed the task? It's actually a bunch of them used. Yeah, uh, okay. So, so that one actually, for that one we called get x, and that's actually just returning a value, so that's more like this. But there's some actually that changed something. By virtue of calling that, it did something. Something we were asking it for value, like get x, get y, um, or get connected agent. Those were giving us a value. They gave us get x, gave us the x value, a number. Get y, a, a number. Get connected agent gave us a reference to an agent. Um, uh, passing me up. So send a message. Send. That send, uh, you call that method to actually send a message. And that's, that's something which changes things. So it's not so much it returns a value. It doesn't return a value. It just does something. It performs a task. Okay? And we, we say here that it modifies the program state. It, it changes something. So these are the two types of division. So it can calculate something for us or it can perform a job for us. Okay? Um, another one was uh, send a message to a randomly selected agent to the environment. We said, hey, environment, send a message to a randomly selected agent. And what you did. Okay. Um, another thing we frequently do with objects is we create, create them. We bring them into existence. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, so these are all common tasks. Um, so let's, let's talk about some common methods. So what do we call methods on? We call them on objects. Now, I don't want to muddy things, but actually, there turns out you can call, you can ask questions about a class when the model's running too, but it's very rare. But for the most part, you do it on, on objects. So if A is an object, it refers to an agent. It's a reference to an agent. It's kind of like we have an agent up here. And maybe that agent is is someone with a certain HSN number, a certain you know medical ID number in the VA system or in the Canadian system, provincial system in Saskatchewan. Um, maybe they have a name, you know. Um, maybe the name Bob. I don't know. Um, but it's a if it's an agent, we have a reference to it. It's kind of like we have a pointer to it. We can we could say okay, we're referring to this one, this person, and we can request things of this guy. So we could say, hey, tell me how many connections you have. And to do that, we use the dot notation. So we say basically, hey, you, you do this job for me. In other words, you give me back a number, the number of people doing the connection. And it will say, okay, go off and do it, and it will return some number. Okay. That's something where it computes a number. Here, we can ask for, a, ask for a string representation. What that means is, It'll show it as a sequence of characters. So in this case, it might return Bob. It might return um, person 37. A dot connect to agent. Now this is different than these guys. Or get connections. This actually will, sorry, this will list, get all the connections associated with this agent. It'll give us back a list of connections. We can kind of go through and look at each in turn. Maybe we want to, well, if we want to count them, we could just call, uh, call this. But if we want to go through each and find out its name, whatever, um, we'll find out its income total of the income of its connection that we can do. So getting this investor. This is of a different sort. In fact, um, these three are different than these and different than these. So this and this also compute things. So they get connected agent. We use this today. We asked this this person, me, get my connected agent number zero. Right. Um, that will return a reference to another agent. So we could get, hey, get your connected agent zero. It returns a reference to Sam, you know, who's down here. And and it and when it when you call get connected agent zero, it will give us back the reference to Sam. Right. These guys, by contrast, these do something. Perform the task. They connect to. You could say, hey, um, I want to connect to, to Sam now. Or, hey, disconnect from Sam. I could say, Bob, disconnect from Sam. Get rid of him. Don't, don't, don't have anything to do with him anymore. Um, or disconnect from all. I could disconnect. So these are types of methods that we may call to get things to either compute things or do things. And by and large, we often try to do only one of those two possibilities in a given method. 
Its job is either to compute things without changing any state, or its job is to perform a task, not compute anything, and it just does something. It changes the current state by changing the way things are, like changing who Bob's connected to. Okay? So these two types of things are often done separately. That's what viewed as good practice. You do one or the other. You don't try to mix them together. There's plenty of exceptions, but by and large, it's viewed as good practice to not mix them. Okay. This is one of the most critical things. If we have if we have Bob, or for that matter, if we had Sam, one of the most critical jobs they can do is tell us where their stage is. Tell us who's their associated main class. So they actually have information on who their associated main class is. Okay. There's actually a main object up here. So Sam also has an associated main class. Yeah, there's, only one main class. there's only one. Uh, there's only one main object. That's true. And and that's this one. Yeah. This is what are we learning in the rest of Because we need a reference to it so we can ask it information. So we need to get a reference to it somehow. Um, it's true there's only one, but the most convenient way is often to get that reference, most convenient way is often to just ask someone who's associated with me, hey, could be in the name. And there's only one. We'll always get the name. Okay. Wherever we ask. Okay. Uh, great question. Um, and how do we do that? We call it get under bar name on it. Okay. Um, so we give a reference to the single instance in the class in which the is embedded. Now, you'll actually see later this week a variant of this. If people, right now people are embedded in the main, the main class. They're embedded in a population which lives in main. So you call it get main. If they live in a city, and the city lives in main, if they're within the city, and you want to ask information about the enclosing city, you call a get under bar city. Information or reference to the city. Okay. Um, okay. Now, here, if we have a reference to an object, I'm trying to unpack this thing we saw earlier. So, we have a reference to an agent. It could say, hey, get my connected agent number two. So that's my third connected agent. Start from zero. In computer science, we start from zero. Zero, one, two. Okay. Um, so, Bit different from our math colleagues. Um, so a dot get connected agent two. That's getting the third connected agent associated with this guy. And um, we, if we call that, we get back a reference. Maybe that get connected agent two is Sam. Okay. And then we can ask Sam, hey, turn me into a, turn you into a, give me your string representation. Give me something I can print out about you. You know, something I can. To write out to a database or to store on console. Give me your name, for example. And I'll print the name of this or okay. um, so, so here, this, this is called the fluent style of programming. Basically, you can string together these things. So, for example, you can do a dot agent two. Give a reference. Ask it to string representation. Or give a reference to a string that represents its name. And then you could say dot length. And that would I'll get the length of that string. So you can kind of string these things together. Okay, so so, so that, that second dot, you're, you're calling uh, a method of that second exactly. third agent. Precisely. And that's a key thing to say. It's not, it's very important to break this up like this. This is done first, and then it's called, uh, two strings called on that, the result of this. It is not, it is not this. It is these are done first. This returns a reference to Sam. And then we call two string on, on Sam to get his name. What have you. Okay? Um, um, so, so, you know, uh, so reading these things in that way is important. Just kind of looking, okay, kind of group it from the left and work out there. Similarly here. Um, here we get its connected agent zero. It's first one. And we get the connections number, the number of connections it has. Okay, that'll give us the number. Two. Three. It'll tell us how many the same as the zero connected. Maybe, maybe it's not Sam, the zero. If he's, if he's third, then maybe it's Joe, you know, or, or Julie. Um, for Julie, if this gives back Julie, this will give the her number of connections. Okay? Very, very helpful to kind of read it out in this way. This is the one of the big 
things that confuses people because they don't know how to read this uh, up front. Okay, um, right. Um, so I don't want to um, muddy the water too much, but sometimes we actually want information or actions that relate to the class rather than to the objects, okay? Um, these things relate to the mold. We want to ask how heavy is the mold rather than how heavy is the thing made by the mold. Um, um, so for example, we might have information uh, that, are, that holds true for any person. Any person has this information, has the same information, um, same characteristics. And we want to be able to use that. It's associated with being a person, but it's, it doesn't vary by person, okay? And we, we call these things and this is one of the, the big confusions that come to people when they use Java for agent-based model, modeling purposes, because this term static comes up. Okay. Static in a modeling context is in context of dynamic. It either changes over time or it's static. It doesn't change over time. Static here means it's associated with class. Okay. So if you see static in Java, it just means it's an attribute of the class. Actually, two ways we'll do that. We'll discuss this in further Java tutorials. But you could make you could make healthcare workers one type of agent and patients another or something, and, and they're they each be described by actions. But that wouldn't capture the commonality between them. But there's uh, there is a way so that healthcare workers are, are recognized as being people as well. It's just that they have extra specialized attributes beyond. They have special characteristics, and maybe a training institution, you know, number of years they've worked in, in, in healthcare, um, you know, a, uh, a sort of subspecialty within healthcare, those sort of things. And those apply only to healthcare workers, okay? And there's ways to capture that. But static information, let me give you an example of static information, okay? Um, if we, okay, um, suppose we had, suppose we have a model we have a lot of agent classes. We have persons, we have deer, we have, we have uh, birds, I don't you know, it's a full menagerie. And, um, and uh, suppose we want to keep track of like, the infectious period for each of these types of things. We could store it in main as parameters in main, but, but you know, it kinda, main kind of gets littered with all these parameters for each of its types of things that are in it. It would be kind of nicer just to have the parameter values that apply across all the people. If, if they have the same parameter, like, you know, um, uh, whether, uh, so their susceptibility to infection. If you assume that certain things are, are the same across people, um, you might as well just say or store those as, as a static piece of information associated with person. I'll give another example. Um, if, um, if you have a person class and you have ethnicity defined, the ethnic categories you have, like what does one mean, what does two mean, what does three mean, that's shared across all persons. The meaning of that, a one or a two or three, or whether zero means a man or a woman, that information could be stored associated with the person. And we'll see cases where that's done. So you'll see later in the week, I'll have sometimes static um, these are the types of ethnicities. So it's, it declares the ethnicities, uh, what ethnicities apply statically. And um, that's um, for this reason. It's, it's kind of a, a characteristic of the person. Similarly, state charts. This is a good example. State charts. You know those names of the states in the state charts? Susceptible, infected, recovered? Those are all static attributes of person. You know, the ones in person are static attributes. Why are they static? Because the meaning of the term susceptible, what the value that that means, is the same across all people. Um, the state chart is the same across all people in structure. And so the, the value of that is the same across the people. So that's a static attribute of a person. Okay? Um, so if we ask, hey, what's the value of susceptible? If we want in Maine to ask, what's the value of susceptible in a person? Um, in other words, what's, what's the value of that? things, we can count up the number of people are in that state. We ask person dot susceptible. We don't ask 
a particular person. We're not asking P or A dot susceptible. We ask person dot susceptible. We're asking the class, give me the value associated with susceptible, being susceptible, and it will give it to us. That is a static attribute of the class. There's only one value for susceptible. It's the same across all people. Okay. So um, uh, here's another example. So um, here's something that maps from. So this is a table function. It maps from given an input value, give you an output value that can be interpolated in a variety of ways, etc. Um, and so we, you know, if the value is zero. Um, are not associated with a particular, a particular object. They're not associated with a particular instance. They're associated with a class. Associated with personhood, not a particular person. This value that relates this thing to this thing is not changed from Earth until we associate it with a class. Why are the two So, um, watch this. Um, so, uh, so there's person, and there's another person. Yeah. Um, sorry. Um, person, and here's person, right? But if I try to open this again, it will just uh, will just stay on on one of them, I think. So, um, hey, come on. Yeah, I'll just go back to the other. So, if I have several classes, open, several models. Okay, um, it's a great, great question. Okay, let's talk about values. So, um, right, right, um, yes, um, okay. This is one of the most fundamental concepts in class cross programming. There's a notion of of, of what it, what's a value. A value holds some some um, particular uh, information, a particular uh, uh, bit of information, um, and variables hold values. Okay, that's that's their job in life is to hold the value. And there's many types of values within um, within a Java or within any logic. For example, a value may be the value of a parameter. Um, it may be um, th th there's this is variables. I, I want to talk about variables a bit, a bit later. But basically, there are several types of values. There's things called primitive values, which are ints, doubles, floats. And in fact, you'll see them quite a lot if you look, um, like look at look at this this uh, variable here. You have boolean, int, double. Those are all uh, primitives. Um, these are primitives: boolean, int, double. And then there's some common ones that are not primitives. In other words, they're classes. Okay. Anything that's not one of these, ladies and gentlemen, is a reference to class, an instance of class. Okay? Um, so um, here, this a value could be a reference to something. Now a variable just holds a value. Okay? That's all variables drops in life. It's a hold a value. So a parameter to a function, something that a function takes to do its job, that's that holds a, a value. Um, uh, that vari variable color we, we just saw, this holds a value. It holds a particular value, a reference to an instance of color. This income, it holds a value which is of type int. Um, over time, that, that may differ. When it first gets created, maybe one value might change a little bit, but basically it holds a value. So variables basically hold values, okay? Um, in static variables, 
these, these old values uh, associated with the class. Um, okay, so um, so when we have references, references to color, references to date, or references to person, um, here the value actually points to something. It actually refers to a certain object, okay? Or it can refer to something called null. And what this means is it refers to nothing, no particular object, okay? It doesn't refer to any legitimate object. So it's, it's kind of like saying this is um, it's not a legitimate value. This is not a value of, of any particular object. Um, yeah. You could think of it as a kind of pointer, but it's kind of a type safe pointer. So in other words, um, it's less dangerous than using pointers. Yeah. Pointers. Exactly. A, a, a reference is kind of a pointer that's guaranteed to be to be valid. But I mean, it actually is the name of an object that's what's it that goes out of the reference to It provides you a way of getting the information from the object. Tech at, at, at a technical level. So all that really matters is it's a way, it's it's information needed to to get information from the object. Either call a method on it or or um, or request um, data yields or so the properties of it. Could be a reference. Yo, oh, that, that's definitely a reference. So, so that's a, so if we have a dot, this is a variable that holds a reference to some particular object. And whatever object it refers to, we're asking that object, hey, get me the, the third connected agent to which you're connected. So a would be a variable that's some piece of memory that holds a pointer essentially to, to a particular object. And by hang a dot, we're saying, hey, whatever whatever reference is in this variable a, ask the person referred to by it to give me their third connected agent. Okay. So what this is, what a reference really is, is information necessary to to to, to do that, to call a method or to extract information. That and and at a physical level, what it generally is is a memory address. Okay. In in a computer's memory that says, go look there. That's where he is. That's where he lives. Uh, the thing I refer to lives at this place. So if you want something, you go talk with him. And, and that allows you to look it up and find information from it or call a value one. That's really how it's generally done because it's efficient. But, you know, it could be, a, it could in principle be, you know, some fancy name which has been looked up at a table and that gives you a reference to what's in memory. What's really important, though, is that it, it's, uh, it allows you functionally to get to, to the thing referred to. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, okay, so let's talk about objects a little bit. So these contain information. And in Java, they're typically they referred to their fields or their properties. Their attributes is another term for it. Um, and then they have some behavior. And that's encoded in methods or functions. These are things that either calculate a value or do something, and unfortunately, sometimes both. Okay, um, so that incorporates their, sort of what they can do for us. Okay, and so they have, we, we say they have state and they have behavior. Objects can contain references to other objects. So, you know, this agent here um, might contain a reference to its name. A, a, an object that has its name encoded as a string, and other, other, value, other values here. Okay, um, now if we have this, that refers to who we are. So if we are executing code associated with an object, if we're in code associated with an object, and if you're in any person class, you're, you're associated with code for the object, so this has a certain value. Who does it refer to? It refers to the current object whose thing is being this code is being run right now. And, th and this refers, so I can ask my own characteristics and so on. So if I ask, let's, let's be clear about this. If I call, um, uh, let's play this out more, but I want to be clear. So if I ask, get me your third connected agent with A. So A refers to Bob. Maybe his third connected agent is Sam. Okay, if I then call, if I call this so if I'm considering this part of it, 
inside, when it has code for a get connected agent here, um, it knows how to perform get connected agent. That's why I can call it um, this method on it. So it has code for get connected agent, which takes some agent agent number i. And that code, in that code, whatever code there is, there's some Java code there. This is referring to Bob. Okay? When you're when you when it returns a reference to Sam and you call two string on that, then if I call two string, Sam knows how to do two string. He has to, or probably, oh, I couldn't call it. Okay, and in this code, this is referring to Sam because I, I called two. Who did I call two string on? I didn't call two string on Bob. I called get connected agent on Bob. He gave me back a reference to two string, and then I call. Sorry, he gave me back a reference to Sam, and then I call on. For Sam, I say, hey Sam, tell me your two string. You know, give me your two string. Call, you know, compute your two string. And so this refers here to Sam because that's what I called it on. So if I call a method on a given agent A dot foo, and foo is a method, inside of foo, this will refer to whatever A referred to. Hmm? If I say A dot foo dot bar, inside bar, if this returns some reference to, you know, Joe, a reference to Joe, um, inside bar, this will be referring, the, inside this call to bar, this particular call to bar, this will refer to Joe. So this tells us sort of our current context, our current, the current object with which you're, I'm associated, okay? So here we go. So if I'm inside a person, I can ask from this, hey, I can ask what's my name, what's my sex. And then I can ask, hey, this dot connected agent zero, that will give me back my, the first agent to which I'm connected. I can call this connected agent one. That will return a reference to this guy, right? I could call, within the scope, I could call this dot get connected agent zero and I can get this guy. I can call this dot get name to get this. Computed something, wherever the first computer would be thrown away. Okay. 
kind of deal. Kind of but uh, let's do one after this. So they call this one. What does this first one do? Well, it creates a variable called mother that contains a reference to ourselves. Why do we do that? Well, because in this code, I want to refer to the mother. And I want to just have a nice way of referring to, um, uh, to the mother. So um, I just use mother as a bit referring to myself. Just to be clear, that's through the mother. OK, here's the offspring. See this called a get me. Really, that should be mother dot get me or or you know, this dot get me. That's implicit. If, if what's implicit here is this dot get me. If you don't specify that in Java, you always have to call a function on something. So if you just see you know sign, it's really this dot sign. You're always calling a method on uh, either on a particular instance or on a uh, class as a whole, like, you know, person dot, you can have a static method, person dot sign, which you call it on, on a class. But the point is you always have to call it on something. So this dot get me, it's really this dot get me. And I say, hey, add to the population, um, the population in me, um, uh, a baby, and add it with age zero, ethnicity, um, certain certain my own ethnicity, so they this dot ethnicity is something I provided. Random sex, that's actually a, a method that uh, is associated with person to calculate a random sex of the baby. Uh, this dot is infected and I infected and some other population to be clear. Okay. Um well, why why mm -hmm. um, is that is infected in that form of it would just compute it. I, um, I just swap it and that. Really, it should be this dot ethnicity to be to be clear, or or you can just do some kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, population. So then you are adding the population, and you're able to without having to find the no uh, person or person. Yeah. Uh, you're able to assign the ethnicity to the baby. This is a, a method. It's a method associated with name. Okay. Um, and when you have a population, um, the, the main class has a method created. If you add a variable called population, there's actually automatically added for you methods that are under bar population, and I think it's delete under bar population, remove population. I don't remember what the top of But the point is, these are things to add members to that population and delete it. The ways of sort of enlarging the population deleting it. And in this case, what we're doing is we're saying, hey, hey, let's let's get the main object associated with ourselves. That's me. This dot get me. This is that. And then we're saying, hey man, you call, you know, this population, I want you to add to the population um, a baby. I want you to add, add this new person to the population of these characteristics. And if you look, this is actually uh, any logical prompt you with these same stuff that you specify. Hey, if you want to add a person to the population, you have to specify their what. What needs to be specified about person when it gets created? We talked about this in class. You have to specify what about, um, about person when they get created. It's their parameter. Remember that? Parameter served that at point of creation, that's the thing you have to specify. The assumptions about them. So these are the parameters. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> um, anyway, um, so um, I, I have that discussed in another another lecture, but let me describe what that is, okay? Um, Java, Java, as I said earlier, programmers make mistakes. And one way to help reduce the likelihood of those mistakes is by by requiring certain things to have certain types. Okay. So, for example, we have to declare here. There's a mother variable. I mean, some languages, like Python, you could just do this. Okay. 
say, okay, there's there's some variable called mother, and I just assign whatever value that is that's all part of it. And it's easy to build languages like that, actually. The problem is that you start getting weird things happening. Like you try to print out a, you know, you try to print out a, a, a database or something like that. It just doesn't make sense. You don't know how to do these things. Um, you try to add a string to a, you know, to a, a, a link list or something like that. So, so, um, Everything in Java has a clearly defined type associated with it. Okay, so mother is a variable with a person type. Here. Offspring is a variable with a person, with like a person for. And when we when we have a method, when we have something that takes a value like i, we have to tell hey, what's expected. And we have a method. The job of the method is um, you give it certain information, and it will do its job. And its job will be Get a value, do something for you above. Okay, um, so add population needs something for each of its elements. It needs something for each of its so-called formal parameters. It needs something provided to it for it to do its job. Okay, it's part of its contract. You give me these things, I'll do my job for you. So what does it need? Well, it needs to be specified an age and ethnicity and then set a sex, a affection status and who the mother is. That's what it needs in life. You add some of the population, you give me that, and it can do its job. This first thing has to be a double. Its age that you want to add this person, their initial age, has to be a value that's a floating point number. Um, so you couldn't put 0.0. This is what's called a cast. Okay, um, C I S T. It's also called the type coercion. Okay, um, type coercion or or cast. And what that's basically saying is, it's it's hard to read. I personally, I think the syntax is terrific. It's like certain other aspects of Java, um, the syntax are not 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 great. Um, but what this is what this is basically saying is, here, whatever value is here. Turn it into a double. Okay. If this was an int, it turn into an int. If it were a, if it were a um, boolean, it would try to turn this into a truly false value. Um, it says turn this from one thing into another. And there's certain things you can do that with, certain things you can't. You could turn a. If this was a floating point number, so you can you know, 1.2, you can actually turn it into an int. We just chop it off so we won't. Um, if this were a, um, uh, if you threw a zero or one, you might be able to turn into a bool, although I kind of doubt that. Um, but this is one thing it does know how to do. You could turn into a short, which is a, a very short interval. So, so this is what's called type coercion. Okay. Now, once it's done this thing, it calls the same trace along. This is actually this like trace and and actually says this baby has been born. Um, yeah, it actually prints it out. Yeah. Basically, we have a mother, we have a baby that we add to the population, 
and then we set its connections and we set the baby's location. It all all's good. And and then I built my birthdays separately, maybe even at some separate time. Things like thought through how to how to sort of do that, you know, with the threads to come in or what have you. So so this is uh, a bit of code here. Point is um uh, there is when you read this code, there's sometimes implicit this is like whenever you, this method looks like it's called on nothing. It ain't called on nothing. If there's nothing specified, it's called on this dot. Um, similarly, ethnicity. That just either that's a variable, but it's not a variable, or it's got to be something like this dot ethnicity. In fact, there's a parameter called ethnicity, so it's got to be this dot ethnicity. Because it's not provided. Okay. Um, it's it's up there. So so those are some um, some comments there. Now we're we're running out of uh, of time here. Here's a little loop, basically loops through for each agent. This is a variable that has for each of the connections of the mother. We'll be discussing these types of statements. But in each of the mother's connections, um, in turn, the variable called a that labels that connection, and for each each such connection, we Turn that into reference to a person. We know it's a person. It's not just an agent. We know there's only one type of agent now. It's a person. So we know it's a person. Job is smart enough to know that. And we say offspring dot connect. Um, so hey, you connect to a person. You know, so this offspring, so this is for an offspring, we call this, and for each of the mother's connections, we add them to the mother to the offspring. All the agents, no, all the mother's connections. Or agent A. No, no, agent A here is the name of each successive connection that's referred, to, that's returned by this. So it calls this, it gets a, a, a set, okay. as it were, of, of connections. And for each member of that set, in turn, it calls it agent A and does this. And then for each next one, it does this. What does that function mean? If, if the mother has not no connections, then we don't run this. Uh, th this will actually cause a problem if we try to run this. Um, so if we try to loop through when this returns null, job will say, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do. And so we first test, if the mother has no connections, don't do anything. Um, but if the mother, or what this is really saying is, if the mother has connections, loop through them. This colon is a specific meaning, and I talk about this in a separate lecture. But basically, um, here, what this is saying for each for each member of this is called a for each loop. So it's saying for each member of this thing after the colon, that collection, technically it's called a collection. Um, label it, consider it as a for each successive one in turn, and perform this little this little code on it. Um, and um, and so for this little code to be executed for each of the members of this whole thing, others got that connection um, in turn, where it for each time it's labeled A. So is that person in parentheses there? Is that a casting? That's a casting just to refer to I think it was complaining, and in one version of any logic at least, it was complaining that it could only be connected to another person, um, not to another agent. It didn't know that agent was a person. So, um, and then you notice, basically, this method took in as a as parameter, as, as being specified, um, a person and age, uh, the mother and the, and the offspring. That's how it knows what mother is here. That's how it knows what offspring is here. It took those in. So you have to give this. For it to do its job, you have to give it a, a reference to a mother and a reference to an offspring. And the reference to the mother is called mother. The reference to the offspring is called offspring. It does this work. And what this is doing is, I mean, simply put, it's establishing links between the baby and all of the mother's connections. That's what it's doing. This this job for each of the mother's connections. If the mother has connections, for each of the mother's connections, it's adding for that baby. It's adding a connection to that mother's connection. Okay. So this is getting a reference to each successive one of the mother's connections. For each successive one, it's adding that to as a connection to the baby. And then, once it's done with that, it adds a final connection between the mother and the baby. Then it's done. When you find that function, where, where are the um, parameters of that function? Mm -hmm. They're actually defining this uh, general thing there. Um, 
So uh, we're going to have to break here in just a second because I don't want you to miss the, um, miss the bus. But um, uh, if we go to um, uh, do 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 do, um, uh, it's called Adrian Mace model. Um, oh, ABM model with birth death. Uh, here we go. And uh, let's let's go look at person. And uh, we will go to. This has been uh, built up since then, but here we are. Here they are. So that's a fun. You know, for this function, it takes, to do its job, it says, give me two things. Give me a reference, a, a reference to a person called offspring. Give me a reference to a person called mother. This should be, you know, a mother and her offspring. And you give me that, and I'll do my job by executing this, this code. Okay. Um, so all of these are using references to objects, which are basically like pointers, pointers to objects that allow you to, to, to request things in the form of method calls, or they allow you to get, get information from the object. Okay? okay. So, so um, that's just a little bit on, on um, these, um, uh, these things. And I think um, we, um, right. Um, I think we're going to have to stop here in, um, in just, uh, yeah, we're going we're to have to stop here because uh, I have some notions of assignment and variables here. So you know, um, so you know uh, how this is working. But I don't want you to, to miss the bus. So um, thanks very much. We'll continue uh, tomorrow with uh, uh, finalizing some discussion of variables and going on to uh, some uh, discussion of types in Java, okay? I think we may do, well, we do methods at one point.